Perfect. Well, hey y'all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. So glad to be able to bring you some fresh content today. We're gonna take the Buick Roadmaster to Cars and Coffee. I haven't been to one in months for obvious reasons. Safety third, put your belt on. Let's see if she fires up. Nice, very nice. This car, unfortunately, hasn't really been driven much because due to everything that's been going on in the world, uh, it hasn't been able to get registered. DMV hasn't been open. And they had a mail-in service, which I was able to use when I bought uh, my cheap Jeep, but uh, when my buddy sent in the paperwork on this one, I'm gonna make sure I don't back this 3,000 foot long car into that pickup. Um, nothing happened and then he got it back saying it was incomplete. So he did finally get it titled and tagged in person. They opened back up if you have a, um, a reservation with them. And so he did that. So this car really hasn't driven anywhere except around the block, um, you know, in Mexico City because it wasn't titled or tagged. And uh, it'll be nice to see how well this goes because I haven't really driven this since I drove it back from sports car workshops where they did a ton of work on it. Well, I won't say a ton. They did a good amount of work to it. This car was actually in pretty good shape. Uh, but it did need new tires and some brake work and the usual things that you do when you kind of recommission a car. Um, although it, uh, my buddy Jerry, who, who sold it, uh, drove it up from Danville where he had had it. And, you know, without question, no problems. The windows are wonky, those still need to be worked on. They have that typical GM thing of this era where they kind of, you know, because some of the clips are busted on them. The AC doesn't really like to work and it's climate control. So, it, you know, it's just basically a very rudimentary automatic system. And then um, the fan works, so that's, that's fine. That was fixed, actually. Uh, there's something in the back clanking around and there's a leak in one of the, uh, I think it's just something in the, with the back seat or something. And there's a leak in one of the rear quarter vent windows, which Reg sent me a link to, and it looks incredibly involved, and you've got to take the roof rack off. And uh, So anyway, that hasn't happened yet, um, because 97 degrees out every day, and uh, day job. It's driving really well. Um, let's check in again when we pull into Regency Square Mall, which is not really much of a mall anymore, as things go, for obvious reasons, but is the site of the Richmond Cars and Coffee to turn into the parking lot here. I'm always amazed when I drive this car how refined it is. I mean, I know it's the culmination of 40 years of making giant body on frame V8 cars that GM did. Well, this is different. I wonder if they move. Oh, wow, they, they tore down like all of the Sears. Okay, interesting. Maybe they moved the location from this parking lot to a different parking lot. I don't know. That's, um unusual okay uh let me get back to you and find out where we are okay i see a guy with a mustang pulling in so i must be in the right spot so i'm gonna go ahead and park up here um on the end because i have a giant giant car and uh yeah i'm pretty much the first one here which is kind of what i wanted to do because i want to be able to Get a good spot. I want to be able to walk around, show you the exterior of the car because that's always kind of fun to see and uh, get to see people roll in and hear them come in. Well, I'm parked and I'm parked on the tailgate, which is a great way to do this. Um, they're doing construction over there, so that's noisy, but uh, yeah, here's the old Buick in all of her glory. Now, I did a full in-depth video review of this car a couple months ago when he got it, so I'm going to go ahead and link to that up above and you can watch that if you'd like. But for now, let's um, let's wait for folks to get here and take a look around and see what cool things we have on offer. Man, check out this gorgeous 63 Beetle. That is awesome. Sweet little interior. All kinds of cool accoutrements on the top. Oh, and I, I hear Troy's diesel Mercedes showing up. You're out of your spot. You're too far back. This thing is also fantastic and I will be making a video of it very soon because it's cherry and it has like 100,000 miles on it, which is unheard of. Really, really nice 64 Thunderbird. Beautiful interior with all that metal work. You never see that anymore. Really cool. And then right next to it, you've got a Ferrari and a C8 Corvette. And then a giant Pontiac. This really is one-stop shopping for car heaven. That's cool. 
Look, this is what I'm here for. These things you never see anymore, and they cost more to restore than those Ferraris cost new. <laughs> what a cool ride. Yeah. It doesn't even start for another 15 minutes. Who knows what we're going to see today? Uh, this is a cool Ford. It really is. A little bit rat rod, but obviously made to look that way. It's really neat. It's got side pipes, exhaust cutouts. I think it's a 50 because it's got one bullet in the... Yep, 1950. I think the 51 had two bullets in the front, but I could be wrong. Next to a C4 Corvette. There's a whole bunch of cool GM right here. And then all shiny nice, nice 442. Oh, Pontiac with the, the eight lug wheels. I love these wheels. Where? You just unbolt the rim, basically, like an actual rim, not the wheel. You unbolt the rim from the brake disc, <laughs> or the brake um, drum, I should say, because they're not discs. It was the only drawback in those, is they were drums, even though disc technology existed. But those are just really cool. They're finned aluminum for cooling purposes. Eight lug Pontiac wheels, really sweet. I highly recommend looking into those if, if you're in the market for a mid-60s Pontiac, if it didn't come with it, because they just look really nice. And we've had an SL join our group. What would you like to tell us about your SL? Well, this is a 1993 uh, 500 SL. This is uh, not an M3. I've had an M3. Well, well, and three, oh, oh, 1990 oh, and, and three. Um, because I'm a weirdo. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, it needs it needs some work, but um, we're we're getting well, no, there. That, that duct tape matches beautifully. It does. It does. It's well, it's the same shade of gray. Yeah, exactly. Um, Fifty of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a work in progress. It was uh, acquired for a hysterically small amount. Of As is kind of the style amongst uh, uh, the people who yeah. uh, are joining us here today. Yep. Um, it needed some work. I just recently replaced the headliner with some uh, Alcantara ish oh, cool. yeah. material. Um, does the roof work? I mean, do you ever take the hard top off? It well, well, well. Uh, the, okay, the roof. Well, we'll just we'll, we'll yeah. let that one slide. So, so. speaking of, speaking of other things, um, yeah, it, it needs it needs a little bit of work, but we've got some uh, I've got some yeah got some plans for it. Sweet. Yeah, man. Very nice. Very cool ride. Yeah. Well, so it, it always helps to have props. Uh, so I've got an actual genuine Mercedes Benz. Uh, yeah, it's got the logo and everything. Yeah, yeah. the logo. When did you made that? I bet it was made by Nokia or something. It was made by Motorola. Oh, Motorola. Yeah. Motorola cool. made this one. Cool. Yep. And yeah, then it's I've probably also the got only one here. I mean, there are probably other cars that have attached phones. Well, so what's but, interesting is that in this in this bag of tricks of I've got are a pink shirt. Oh, oh, you've got the, the phone that actually came with the car, and it's carpeted. Because, it is. Car um, it is carpeted. Yeah, because, because luxury. phones should be carpeted. Phones should be carpeted. Um, so I noticed you're wearing an AMG shirt. Is this an AMG model? This, uh, not yet. Oh, ah, okay. Not so you're yet. going to make it into an AMG it's model. It's going to become an AMG model. But again, <laughs> I, I thought that it was necessary. He's just cracking up bring, in the background. Oh, <laughs> I thought that it was necessary to bring uh, a helmet, a does racing that, helmet. So does that's that where I can see myself. In. Does that work with the top up? It works with the top up or down. Well, yeah, definitely with the uh, down. You probably want to with the windows up though, right? Preferably yeah, with yeah, the windows yeah, up, yeah, 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 because Corona. Right. Um, <laughs> so I, I need to put this, did we put this on the hood? Or, or on that, the roof, like you right here. Roof. You put it like it's, right here, go, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So yeah so the reason I'm for asking, a racing start, if it's a Le Mans racing start, you know, you want to- you have it on? No, I think you had to, did you have to I don't know. Uh, I think you had to put everything on and then belt in or something. The main reason I'm asking is that I don't have a GoPro, but I do have an old Polaroid. Uh, that I'd um, like to stay. That I'd like to tape. That's like you know, even way older than this that, car. Oh, uh, yes. I'll, uh, I'll uh, rally vent. You'll get what? some double-sided tape in the car. Much like a rally car vent. I've got. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, I got a again it's open oh, yeah. carry. Open front. carrying there. Yeah, yeah. open yeah. carry because you know because it's my right. Yeah. Yes. Open carrying. Yeah. Um, what is that like a tape box or something? This. Oh no, this is super cool. So this. Yeah, it's got a sliding lid. I can see this that. This is a. Cup oh, it's got a cup holder. Wow. That Mercedes never made. This is a company called Fisher Box. Oh, my dad had those these. in his 300E back in the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. So this okay. is going to be repl replacing Replace the, the, center tape, console. the tape thing. But when I got it, it was black. Oh, so you've, um, you've painted it to match. I well, I I uh, enlisted the services of uh, interior guys uh, okay. to do to do that. Very cool. Yeah, and they all did right. a phenomenal, phenomenal job. See, how can y'all just not come have so much fun here when there's just all these cool people showing up doing all kinds of random things like this? Oh good, Andy just showed up in the Mondi. It looks perfect next to the Buick. Yeah, same car, really. I mean, it's just as dirty as the Buick. It's like, that's a nice bug splatter there. How's that? 
folks, there's a Turbo Mondial next to a Buick Roadmaster. Hey, look, there's another Buick here. What is it? 64 Special. It's got like the green woven vinyl upholstery. Oh, it's so green too. Wow. It's got it's got eyeball vents in the center vent. I wonder if this has if this is an AC car. I can't really make it out from this side. This might this might be an AC car. I mean, it is a Buick. That was not too uncommon. Uh, it says cold hot. No, it's not. Not an AC car. Little hubcaps too. Check out this Galaxy with a 390. It's like really cool shade of like orange almost, with matching interior with chrome striping, piping. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Bullet taillights. And we've got a few Porsches today. Oh, there's that caddy. This is a good one. Chris is with a nice houndstooth interior. Love the houndstooth interior. But this is what I was looking for. 55 Coupe de Ville. Wow. This is not an AC car because it doesn't have the scoops. Tufted interior. Very cool. A lot, of, a lot of patina on this. Really cool. I've always wanted a 56, which has a slightly different grille treatment, but uh, the size of the Dagmar bumpers. That's like service position. So he and I did our service position. Is, it rocks. <laughs> Every other car manufacturer should do a service position. Just, just saying, because um, working on cars with hoods that are just up like halfway gets really old really fast. Really. Old. It's a nice 528 here. I actually had two of these. Both were 525s. They're a little bit later than this one, but the E39 is just a beautiful, beautiful car. It is like a. Like a perfect sedan, mid-sized sedan design. It really just is gorgeous. Oh good, another Lambo. It's not cars and coffee without a couple of Lambos. Especially when they're in excellent colors. Well, all right, y'all, that was a fun Cars and Coffee. I'm gonna go head over to a Buddy's Warehouse, check that out, take a look at some of his cars. So that's gonna be my afternoon. I just, this car got so much views. People just love seeing this car. And I was really glad to be able to bring it to them. And, you know, it's sitting next to a turbocharged Ferrari Mondial and a bunch of other cool stuff. And like, people are looking at the Buick. Like, can, why? Because it's awesome. This car just rides so well. The interior is pristine. It's got 67,000 miles on it. So I'm just so happy that I get to drive this thing around for a little bit longer. I do wish the air conditioning worked. But uh, yeah, such is life. So once again, thanks y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little foray into the Richmond Cars and Coffee today. And I will be bringing you, <laughs> he's throwing revs in the Mondi. I'll be bringing you more content soon. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> got a little bonus content. I just want to show how crazy wild the tack is in this car. I'm flooring it. This car will not do 7,000 revs. I'm, I'm flooring it. Actually, I, I gave it just a little tiny bit of gas and it went to 7,000 revs. <laughs> yeah, GM gauges from this era were not known for their reliability.